fine, you can say it. What is up, guys? Is that what you wanted, George? Genius. Is that what you guys wanted? <laughs> Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. I'm George, and we've heard you in the comments, and we brought back the man, the myth, the master of banter oh, himself, man. Ben. Thanks, George. It's fun to be back. Like yeah. seriously, I'm sitting here in the studio, and I'm like, it's so big and beautiful. It's amazing. So yeah, thanks it's for come having a long me. way. It has absolutely. For those of you who are pretty new to Knife Banter, Ben was the marketing manager a long time ago, and Knife Banter was his idea. Actually, I, I gotta correct that. It was me and Austin and Jamie's idea. It was, it was like always a team effort. So, and it's turned into a really fun thing. You get to talk about knives on, on YouTube. And Ben has since kind of outgrown his pot here at Blade HQ and become a real fixture in the knife industry. But it's been like three years since you left. Yeah, more than three. So we're hoping to sort of see what you've been up to and we'll tell you what yeah. you've been up to. We'll catch up a little bit. I'm excited. So here's the deal guys. Like I left of August of 19. So like, I don't see all the new releases. I don't see all the new stuff that comes out. So when we were talking about this video, I was like, show me the new stuff, put it in my hand. Cause I don't, I'm just not in it the way you guys are in it. But you guys also are in my world the way I'm in my world. So I'm excited to share. Well, let's start with what you've got. What have you been up to? Okay, so here's the deal. I came out with the banter in 2020 and I'll show you this one real quick. This is the Micarta banter that just came out this week, actually, last week. So we've, we've got a whole bunch of banter models that have come out. This came out through Wii, and then we also made one with Civivi. This one is not sharp. The uh, baby you, banter. Yeah, the baby banter. <laughs> if you know, you know, If right? you know, you know, <laughs> yes. But basically, I wanted to design the knife that I wanted. And so I'd handled hundreds of knives, thousands even. And so the banter came out in 2020. We've since come out with a lot of different versions. This is one of the Blade HQ exclusive ones in natural G10. So we came out with that one. We came out with the carbon fiber one as well. So this was kind of my first like solo gig into the knife industry aside from NAFs. I had started NAFs already and basically came out with the banter series. So that carbon fiber banter is hot. You like that? I the really marbled like that. carbon fiber? Yeah. Nice. Like, it, like, I just love the way it catches the light in different yeah. ways. It's like one of those old things you got in elementary school that would change pictures yes. and look at it. But it's love it. knifey, I love it. <laughs> so I've been doing that, designing for Wii and Civivi, and then I came up with my own brand called NAFs. Uh, we just launched our first Kickstarter. In fact, uh, I've got that one in my pocket, and we launched the Lander. So you guys are gonna be getting these at Blade HQ, I think as soon as this video comes out or shortly thereafter. $58 D2 steel, and it's basically like a cousin to the banter. Uh, there were mm -hmm. a couple things on the banter that I thought, what if we did this a little differently? What if we changed that? And that's kind of what became the lander. And the scales on it are swappable. I'll show you that in a minute, because it's kind of fun. They're called fast swap scales. Mm -hmm. You can change them without undoing the pivot. This is kind of like, if you've seen the Ontario Rat 2, this is sort of, what I think is the next gen of that sort of thing, sure. same size, but you get that really nice blade steel and those swappable scales just, they, they take it to the next level. You can make the lander anything you want it to be. I, I want to talk about that in just a minute because okay. we're, we're going to have some fun with that stuff. All we'll right. talk about that with the tool burrito, but I want to see what you've got on the table before we dive into all of my stuff. Can we back and forth a little bit? Yeah, well, I mean, the first thing we we're gonna talk about that you've missed out on is the budget bar has been raised. The budget bar has been raised. That doesn't mean okay, the budget me. is higher. That just means what you can get at the budget sphere okay. is so much better than it once what was. What you got? First thing, I picked this knife because I think this is Ben's knife. First thing, it has a front flipper. I know how you feel about this. <laughs> Justin Lundquist, you and I are gonna have a heart to heart. Front flippers <laughs> are not the way. I think Let's this see. one might be the way. This is what, the Lumi? This is the Lumi, yep. Did you guys see that? <laughs> you did! Can we get some, can we get some sparkles? <laughs> Yes. Uh, I actually own this one. Really? I do. So I thought it would be a Ben knife because it's got nice G10. Did it's got the recessed pocket clip with the recessed screws. It passes the finger test. It does. And it's 50 bucks. Yeah. No, this is a cool knife. I think Justin and Sabivi knocked it out of the park on this one. It's funny because it has his feist uh, DNA. It's almost like the lander and the banter have the same DNA. Mm -hmm. But this one, I think in some ways is better than the feist. For me, like I can't front flip the feist. I struggle with it. It goes kind of near the front. This one's it's near the front. The top. Uh, this one I can do, and I, I actually really like it. Nice job. Yeah. And this one has that 14C28N steel. Cool. I think it's not as popular as it should be because it kind of has a weird name that's hard to remember. But that's the one that Laren Thomas called the best budget steel you can get. Nice. Which I think is awesome. And if Laren Thomas said it, that's like that's the gospel truth, right? That there. is absolutely. <laughs> 
He's amazing. If you're not familiar with KnifeStillNerds.com, I'm just gonna plug him on the Blade HQ YouTube channel if that's Please okay. <laughs> Laren Thomas is a steel magnet. Doctor like, Laren he, Thomas. He's, yeah, he's a doctor. He's a metallurgy. <laughs> it's cool. Okay, what else you got? Yeah, um, I mean, talking about budget bar, I mean, even the humble Kalashnikov. What have you done to it? Upgraded to D2. Really? Yeah, and it's still so around from that So from AUS8 to D2. Just getting some better toughness and edge retention. Yeah, it's really awesome. We really like it. I like the Kalashnikov, mostly because I know like people love it. Mm -hmm. But it's not for me, which is a funny thing because I think knives can be for you and they can't be for you. Mm -hmm. This one for me, I'm like, I just can't pull this out in an office setting mm -hmm. and be like, everything's fine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's, it's, a, it's an aggressive knife, especially when you open it. But I think that's part of, that is the appeal is it's like, mm -hmm. this is a cool knife. And I, I love the upgraded steel on it. Nicely done. And then lastly, on the budget front, we are talking about how even, like this is the SOG Terminus XR. Okay, let's talk about SOG. Can we talk about SOG for a minute? Like when yeah. did the name change? Like when did it not become SOG? Like, I don't know, how does that I work? still call it SOG. I have to tell myself SOG. SOG. What does it stand for? Studies and Observations Group. Two points. Nicely done, I win. George. <laughs> let's see it. Yeah. So this is their crossbar lock, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. But that like thing it. has a carbon fiber overlay on the G10 and then S35VN on the steel, particle steel, and you're getting it for 90 bucks. That's cool. It seems that everywhere else in the world, inflation is hurting everyone. Everything's getting more expensive, but you're getting really awesome features for not more money in the knife world. That's a cool pocket clip. I yeah. like it. It's So it's, it's not your recessed screws like I like. It is the up and over pocket clip that you'll see like on Microtex and stuff, which makes it reversible easily. My only qualm with these, and I want to see if you have the same qualm, does that catch on your pocket or is that just a me thing? Like um, the, the upper part of the pocket clip. Maybe I, let us know in the comments. Does. Maybe I, I always feel it's snagging on something, but I yeah. guess that might be it. I don't know. I, I love the design of the pocket clip. I'm just curious mm -hmm. if people have the same experience with these wrap over ones that I do, where it snags just a hair. I don't know if this one does or not, yeah. but I always figured curious it was feature. the seam of my pocket was a little thicker. I don't know. Also, my jeans tend to wear out. Do your jeans wear out on the pocket? Yeah. And so do. I think <laughs> it might be like the threads catching on there. Mm -hmm. That's a nice knife. What's the steel? S35VN. Wow. What was the price point? $90. <laughs> Sog. I mean, SOG. You guys are killing it. That's yeah, amazing. That's the raising of the budget bar. I love it. All right, what's your thing? What you got? All right, next on my table is the, the tool burrito. Now, you like to work on, on your pocket knives, right? Yeah. So <laughs> Who doesn't? Well, so I have an issue where like, I kind of live in, I wouldn't call it mess, but like I live in a space where it's like, there's things everywhere. Like I'll have knife parts and different things. Mm -hmm. And I always find if I'm taking a knife apart, I lose parts. Mm -hmm. So I solve this with a little, basically a tool burrito. You keep your tools inside the burrito. Mm -hmm. And then it has a teardown mat right here. So when you are working on your knife, let me work on this blue one right here. So you take your screws out and you drop them on the corners, there's magnets. Oh, that's genius. Isn't that fun? Really so you have a teardown mat right here. So like as you, as you pull parts apart, you can just throw them on the mat right here, but then you can also throw them on the corners. And they don't it's called a, called a tool burrito, brand new from NAS. And uh, I'm excited about it because it goes right along with this philosophy of like maintaining your own stuff, mm -hmm. caring about your own tools. So like you can keep your lube here, your Loctite, your strop, all this stuff stays in one place. Um, and I, I just love, like, I love to tinker with stuff, but I tinker in messes. Like my garage is always, I don't know. If you have a clean garage, how do you do it? <laughs> what is the trick? Cause I want to know, like my garage will be clean like once a year and then it's gone. But mm -hmm. nice thing about a tool burrito is you throw that on top of the mess, you work on your stuff, and then you can kind of keep track of all your things in one place. So kind of a weird idea, but it's something I wanted and I'm like, sweet, we can do that just like that. And now you so, can put new scales on your lander. And now you can put new scales on it. So one of the cool things about the <laughs> lander is the scales are open source. So you can actually go and download the CAD file. You can print your own at home. You can manufacture your own. I don't care. But then you can just drop them right on. And this is just a 3D printed version. Drop them on, screw it on, you're good to go. So you can pick whatever color you want. You can have somebody make some for you. You could go to a local machine shop and say, here's the CAD file, ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, it's open source. So I'm excited about that because I have heard some cool things coming out for the lander. It's just like, whoa, that's amazing. Somebody sent me a picture the other day and I was like, <laughs> it's just, I feel like the lander is a super bland knife, but it's a canvas. It's like and vanilla ice cream. It's you can add Oreos, you yep. can add raspberries, whatever. Exactly. So I'm excited about that. And the tool burrito goes along with that philosophy of owning your own stuff, maintaining your own stuff. And George, I actually brought you one. 
This one is yours. Thanks, man. <laughs> but it's called a burrito, so it comes with a it comes with a surprise. Okay. Open her up. Open her up. Open her up. All right. Oh, but those magnets instead of snaps. I'm all over that. Yes. It's got... Have you ever tried a Vero mango? I have not. Is okay. it time to try Vero it's mango? It's time to try a Vero mango, guys. Okay, so a Vero mango is a, is a Mexican sucker. That I'm not has gonna say it's... chili powder on the outside. Yeah, that doesn't look delicious. No, it's delicious. You gotta try it. <laughs> do okay. it. Hmm. What do you think, George? <laughs> Your face. That's amazing. That is not what I was expecting. I was expecting <laughs> to amazing. taste a little mango in there. But no, I'm just I'm just sucking on the spice. Try it, try right again, now. try again. Yeah? No? We'll, we'll get there. Oh, there's a little bit. There's a little bit on the back. How many I love these does it things. take to get to the delicious I'm not part a, of the I'm not a mango. salesman of the, the Vero mango, but I do love them. They're they are delicious. I don't think I could get through a show and eat that though. So I think um, I got this. You got this? Are you gonna down it during the show? <laughs> I'm gonna do my best. No, I'm trying to stay legend. on task too. You're a legend, George. <laughs> oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> so as you can say, one of my favorite things about your NAPS products. Yeah. I was a copywriter for three years here. There were so many products that came through, I'm like, this is just a harmless and creative way to show that I'm a knife nerd. Yeah. Like this strop flight tag. Yeah. In there. Yeah. What a genius little thing. Like you just put it on your bag and then there's a leather tag when you're at the airport. I know it's there, but also I can sharpen my knife with it. Yeah. And then my personal favorite thing was that ruler. You, you like have. the rulers? They're, yeah. They're goofy guys. Like my job was to measure knives. Oh, I want to talk about, oh, does this knife have a thick edge or a thin edge? Easy. It has these little edge guides. Oh. This is a nice thick edge. So I'm going to tell the people this is. Did a you use it with your job? You sure bet I did. Dude, that makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. I use mine all the time, mm -hmm. but I think for like your average person, I don't know that. Who needs a, a like thirty dollar titanium ruler? It's like thirty seven bucks. I but do. That's the thing. Is like <laughs> I use mine all the time, and it's it's just a stupid little tool that you can you can find your edge angles, but then you can also say, hey, how long is this? I use it like every day. So if you're a if you're a ruler person, highly recommend. I think you guys have yeah. them in stock too. We do. So. But yeah, the, the whole idea is basically design tools that fit together. You can kind of see I'm working out from, from one place, designing things that all fit into a burrito. What else you got? All right, so the next thing that sort of has taken the knife world by storm is the button lock flipper. So I'm not gonna claim it's the first, but the man that made it all happen was Dave over at ProTech. With the Dave Wattenberg, yeah. That man's a legend. You wanna <laughs> talk about legends, Dave is truly a legend. Uh, I love the Malibu. Mm -hmm. I have handled a couple. But that action, like, especially from a guy who's known for automatics, it's almost like he he put the automatic action into a flipper. Which he did is a really remarkable. good job, yeah. too. Yeah, and he's got that new Mordax coming out. I got my eye on that thing. If you've seen those. What is, what is the, I haven't seen the Mordax, so maybe flash it on screen for me and everyone yeah, it hasn't. It's coming soon. It's a Ferrum Forge design. Cool. Made by ProTech. The nice. same kind of flipper action. That's but, cool. Dave is Dave is legendary. Well mm -hmm. done, Dave. Yeah, but he sort of paved the way and you've seen a lot more. So, I mean, this is from a new brand, Sencut, which is like, we needed budget Civivi, but then Civivi started getting a little better and a little higher end. Okay. And so they made the budget Sencut. But the, this does not feel like a budget knife to me. Let's see. That thing is a $50 knife with a micarta handle. Nice. Nice drop shutty thing. Nice. Drop shutty action. Skeletonized handle too for weight reduction. That's nice. Yeah. And I guess going back to sort of the budget thing, you're getting a lot, like for 50 yeah, bucks. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's incredible to me. I feel like everyone in the knife industry is getting really, really good at their game. Mm -hmm. And everybody kind of has their lane in their game, but they're like crushing it. Like, I, I feel like your margin of error now has to be so much slimmer than it used to be. Like you could just kind of throw out a potato of a knife mm -hmm. and people would be like, it's great, it's fine. But now it's like, you have to put out really good stuff or like there's just so much option and variety out there that it doesn't like, you're not relevant if it's not good. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, it's kind of a, an interesting, it's, it's a wonderful time because there's so much opportunity. It's fun. Anyway, so button lock flipper is a new thing. I love it. What else you got? I'm, I'm like totally <laughs> enjoying this. So can you talk some new materials real quick? Yeah. So one that's kind of become a little more popular lately is the fat carbon. Yeah, so so tell me about fat carbon. I saw a, a guy came up to me at Blade Show with like this, this ring of fat carbon. He's like, I scored some fat carbon. I'm like, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what, what is it and why is it cool? So fat carbon is actually a brand. Okay. And they make these marble carbon fibers where they infuse the resins with metals or dyes or other things. Let's see. Sort of make it pop some color. This one I want to say they call it lava flow. Lava flow. Where it's the black with the red. And it 
sort of, I think it adds a tone to your knife. So there's that one, which kind of has the dark feel, the valley yeah, of it, the shadow of death. Feel. It kind of feels like that scene from Star Wars where they're like fighting at the volcano. Yeah. You underestimate my power. Don't try it. Yeah, and then they also have one that's blue or one that's blue and white. I have a ton of cool different colors and it's just sort of a premium way to add some flavor to your knife. That's awesome. Uh, another new one is CF Elite. Okay, so I've seen this on the bug out. Like, what is it? Like, what is CF Elite? So you've heard of FRN, fiberglass yes. reinforced nylon, or GFN, glass yes. filled nylon. This is a lot like that, but instead of reinforcing with fiberglass, they reinforce with carbon fiber. But it gives you a stiffer knife and a stronger knife, but a little bit of a lighter one too. Oh, interesting, because that, like, that was the big complaint. So mm -hmm. I, was, I was here at Blade HQ and the original bug out came out. And a lot of people liked it, and the other very vocal naysayers hated that it was so flexible. And so I think they basically solved that. Like that doesn't, I don't, know if, we, I don't know if you can catch that on camera, but that does not flex yeah. as the former ones did. Yeah, so the flex that's never really bothered cool. me though, so. Don't, act, don't, don't think that's a big problem, but some people don't care for it. I like it. Yeah, by the way, they you made know, a mini bug out. I know, isn't that amazing? <laughs> you said they wouldn't. That's because Hans told me they would never do it. And then on the CF Elite, Elite train as well, they because it's stronger and stiffer, this is the first time I've ever seen a fully nylon handled OTF with the shootout. Nice. You seen this one? This thing yeah, like, that's it nice. feels way lighter than you think it would. It has a nice smooth action, it's fidgety, it's everything you want out of an OTF but it's lighter and more pocketable. Yeah. yeah. I like how they they expanded the firing button. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's much higher than I remember. Like the Infidel kind of has that podium jumping on it. Mm -hmm. This thing is much higher. Like that's probably like quarter inch higher than the other one. Yeah, it makes it hard to slip off. Yeah, no, like if you're wearing gloves or whatever, like I actually like that. I want to see somebody run over it with a truck to see if it's strong. George? Um, don't, I don't you have, have a truck, <laughs> but I know Spencer does. He drives a Tacoma. I'm just curious, like <laughs> does it hold up? I, let me know if you own one of those. I'm curious if it holds up. All right, what you got next? So George, I wanted to I wanted to play a little game with you here. Okay. So this is my knife poster. I think we, we've probably talked about this before on here, but uh, it's like everything you ever wanted to know about knives in one place. I've seen a couple of them kicking around your office, which is kind of fun. But- It's a great uh, reference. It's a great reference. It's, it's like everything I used to know at one time about knives. And so I threw that all together in a big poster, but I wanted to challenge you to a duel because on the on these guys, the tubes, these things are duel worthy. Are you in for this? I'm in. Are the camera guys in for this? Can we can we duel? I don't know. Like, what you got? <laughs> How is this not <laughs> bent yet? <laughs> I'm telling you, these these things. I mean, we should sell posters, but talk about tubes, guys. These are serious tubes. So packaging is a funny thing to me. Like when you design a product, like yes make a good product, but also like, I think have fun with your packaging too should be like a major thing yeah, I mean, in the industry. You've got one on the table here, James Brand. James Brand has the best packaging bar none. It's amazing. It's a pretty great stuff. I'm gonna say White River is compatible. Compared okay. to that. Okay. They have a really cool package they do. too. <laughs> they do. And I'm, I'm not gonna be the one to say like, I have amazing packaging, mm -hmm. but uh, I love that I get to design my packaging from the ground up. And I, I've kind of done everything in like craft paper. Mm -hmm. um, so like your tool burrito comes in craft paper, that's craft paper. That's starting to taste like mango. Is it? Yes. <laughs> but I, I love like the process. And that's, I, I think that's one of the things in the knife industry that's often overlooked on the consumer side too, because like you get the packaging, you throw the box in the closet, but like, mm -hmm. What is the experience opening the, the packaging? What's in it? What does it tell you? What does it teach you? We're all learning. I wouldn't, I, again, I'm not perfect in this, but I love that process of creation. And for me, it's been really fun to like create the packaging for the lander. It's like in this little gift box and like the insert has like a schematic on how to, what the parts are and like all these different things because I wanna teach people how to use their knives, not just own it. Like, mm -hmm. I want you to maintain it. I want you to know what the parts are. I'm gonna sell you the parts if you need the parts, right? Thanks for having a sword fight with me. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, so Carson who used to work in the warehouse. Yeah. He's off to do adventures now. He was the guy who would draw the pictures on your packaging. He was amazing. Yeah, legend. he was legend. Anyway, he was saying once, I can tell what knife I like just by its box. This guy yeah. held thousands of knife boxes every day. And I think that is a real thing. Packaging matters. It does. Yeah. So another cool material that I think Timote was sort of the pioneer of is called Ultim. Ultim. You ever heard of Ultim? I've heard of it, but I don't understand the hype. Help me on the hype. I think the first time it showed up on a knife was on the Chris Reeves Sakeo, that kitchen knife from a while back. Okay, so it's been out for a long time then. Yeah, but just recently, we've sort of noticed that it's awesome. 
Yeah. And it has a cool story too. So back in the day, airplanes Man. were trying to maximize payload and minimize the weight of the plane itself. And so they're like, hey, we need a plastic that's super light, but about as strong as aluminum so we can make our lavatory occupied sign out of it. We want it 3D printable. We want it super heat resistant. And if it does burn, we don't want it to put off noxious fumes. What you got? And people came up with Ultim. Wow. And See, I didn't know the history. But you just explained what's cool. <laughs> Like the fact that it's super hard, but also doesn't, it's not it's not toxic fumes. I love it. It looks good. It doesn't really wear, but it's just as light as like your FRNs. Yeah. I think it's really rad. It's a little pricey, but I think it's worth it. And it kind of gives you a look to the inside of your knife, sort of a transparent yeah. look. It's one of those things that's it's eye catching, but in a way that you're like, is it supposed to be like that? Like did somebody like, mm -hmm. was that intentional? But now that I see it in person and like actually I, I'd handled, I think one other knife with it on it, I was like, eh, it's fine. And I'm thinking like, if I'm ever camping or something and I drop my knife in the fire and be honest, you've done it, I've done it too. But I'd like something that can take the heat. I don't want something that's gonna melt in the fire. Okay, or here's, burn. here, I, I need a torture test video, George. I need you to take <laughs> ultimate, drop it in the fire and then run over that bench bed and see how it does. We right. need some torture tests. And then next up, we got Magna Cut. Nice. And we were giving some love to Laren Thomas. Yes, well-deserved love. Yeah, he cooked up Magna Cut with Crucible. And you should go read his blog on how Magna Cut was made. So he made a steel that would be the perfect knife steel on paper. But he's like, I wonder if it could be made. And he sent the order into Crucible just to make it and sell it. And at the last minute, there was something going wrong, like it wasn't coming together and they needed to add more carbon. And that would have affected the performance of the steel but it just wasn't coming together in the forge. And Laren says, okay, if you need, you can add 0.1% more carbon or something to make it work. And the guy's like, oh, actually it just came together. And the dream Magna Cut wow, steel was cool. born. That's cool. Uh, so I, I jump on knifestillnerds.com to check out the steel stuff. And I get about three quarters of the way through an article and my eyes, they glaze. Because <laughs> about three quarters of the way through, he starts to get really, really technical. And like you read that stuff and you're like, I will buy Magna Cut because this guy knows what he's talking about. Like I don't, like there's so much depth to it. Mm -hmm. So I'm stoked about Magna Cut. I don't have it on any of my knives at this point, but I am stoked to see like the community bringing something back to the community in a really big way. I think it's awesome. And if you haven't heard what the specs of Magna Cut are, in general, you get about the same toughness as CPM 4V, which is a high-end carbon steel you'll find on fixed blades. But you get the edge retention of 20 CV, which is the standard. I mean, I think you have some 20 CV yeah. over here. Yep. And then stainlessness rivaling that of H1. It is everyone's dream. Life Somebody steel. needs to throw this one in the Great Salt Lake. George, I'm just making we your content We gotta go back and do that. Yeah, you. man. Go <laughs> throw it in the Great Salt Lake and just see what happens, you know? It's great. Yeah. And while we got this Hogue Deca out, so a certain lock has entered the public domain. Yeah. And it has blown up. And you've seen it on a lot more than your three inch drop points. You have it on your, I mean, three inch drop points. Yeah. Some people have taken it to new heights with this USA made Klein with the Magna Cut steel as well. Nice G10 handle. And then back on SOG, they took it tactical. They took their this steel. This thing is a hog, man. <laughs> yeah. May I? Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah, it's got enough. I don't have the like... specs, but this thing, I think it weighs like five pounds, six <laughs> ounces. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's some newborn children that weigh less than this thing. <laughs> yes, that is amazing. I feel like I could take on the world. Yeah. You know, that's amazing. As Nick Shabazz would say, this thing is ready for the Vaseline factory. There's so much jimping on it. Yes, wow, there is. I I feel like you've gotta be wearing like <laughs> parka gloves. Like this, is, this was made for like tactical warfare in the Arctic. Yeah. With its jimping. The Sherpa warriors. Would yeah, the thing. Sherpa warrior. I love it. <laughs> no, they'd probably carry a kukri. <laughs> yeah, but that might be a good backup, right? Like yeah. a good secondary. Mm -hmm. That's that's way cool. I like it. Yeah. Well, that's all I've got. You got anything else? Okay. So one thing with the lander that I'm having fun with is the scales. I mentioned this a little bit. So you can actually pick up aftermarket white scales. You can pick up aftermarket natural, and then we carry the black ones too. Uh, but basically, like I wanted to create something that people could customize and give you options without having to wait months and years for new colors to come out. And so, yeah, the lander is, is sort of this captures this idea of like the moon landing, take control of your future. And so we called it the lander, uh, kind of infused some of that space kitty juju into it. That's kind of what I've been working on. I, I got a few other things I can't show yet. But they're exciting too, but I'm Yeah, I think I'm you showed really me enjoying. one, and that one is at the very front of my wish list right now. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could, like, I, they're sitting here, I, I won't do it though. 
I'll have to come back. Or he something. called Seth and Seth said no. Seth said no. <laughs> That's fine. But it might be. <laughs> George, I want to know for my own curiosity, what's in your pocket? What are you carrying? Um, so I, I was actually telling you about this earlier. I read that blog you did where you re carried a fixed blade for seven days and you yep. didn't like it. So I thought I'd try it. And I actually really liked it. How long have you been carrying this one? Uh, this one about two and a half weeks. Nice. I didn't like the brown leather. So I just took it to my buddy Lyons and he dyed it black. Nice. And I put this ulti clip so I could pocket carry it. Cool. And, the and you, like, you like the EDC fixed blade? I really do. I feel powerful. I felt like things were stabbing me in the sides all day. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like in middle school where like the kid behind you is like constantly like poking you. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I feel about EDCing a fixed blade. Cause it's like, I'm a skinny sucker. And it's just like, oh, that's my ribs. <laughs> like, I like it, man. Yeah, that one's actually Nicely an exclusive done. we're running right now with the CPM M4 steel. Yeah. And you don't see that a lot on fixed blades, which is a crying shame if you ask me, but we saw it here, so I bought it. Nice. What you I got? Love it. So I was carrying this lander when I walked in. It's in pieces now, but I also, this is a fun little addition. I've been carrying the compact. You drank the Kool-Aid. No, I didn't. No, <laughs> oh. I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> Don't misunderstand caring and loving. Okay. Like these are different things. So I am a Leatherman Squirt PS4 man through and through, like in my heart of hearts. It broke my heart when they discontinued it. It's discontinued? Yeah, isn't that the worst? They discontinued the PS4? I think they're gonna, re I think they sort of- Leatherman, the what have you done? <laughs> Why? <laughs> no way, best. that's crazy. I switched over to a compact because Zach and I are switching tools. So he is carrying a, a PS4. You ever, you ever seen the pen trick with the, the, the no. corkscrew? No, what you got? So you take your pen, you pull it out. And if you're, let's like, if you're like drawing a ton of stuff, you bring your whatever screwdriver out and then you thread your pen. If I can do it with these sweaty fingers, you thread your pen in there and then you actually oh, have a Oh, that's that a pretty write. good trick. Yeah. I'm still not in love. Well, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> George, this has been a pleasure, man. Thanks it, for having me on. It it's, really has. Thank you so fun much for to, back. It's fun to reconnect with the folks at home too. I, I know like there's new crews, there's old crews. I'm just grateful I got to come back. Like this is actually the first time I've been on Knife Banter to talk about the banter, which is a kind of a fun event for me. Uh, so thanks for having me on. And yeah. I, gotta, I gotta put a plug in for the crew for just half <laughs> a second. It is hard to run a YouTube channel. Uh, I've done it three times and every time is like rugged. So I think you can't sit there and say, we want Ben back, we want so-and-so back. Like you have to look at what it is and say, sweet, how can I help craft it into what I want it to be? I'm grateful to be back. I think you're crushing it, George. Spencer, Thanks, also ben. crushing it. No, and I don't just say that, like this is a hard job. <laughs> Uh, sitting in front of an audience of potentially half a million people mm -hmm. and being like, here's the stuff. And and like, everybody's gonna sit here and be like, well, your hair and your nails and like, <laughs> you're, you're on camera, right? That's how it works. But I would just encourage you guys in the audience, like tell them what you wanna see. Tell them like, hey, love this. Wanna see more of that? Like encouragement, positivity. As I read the comments, I've seen them. <laughs> Sometimes you guys are rough. I'm just gonna say it, it doesn't need to be rough. <laughs> your channel and the knife community should be community. <laughs> and I think there's a difference between feedback and what we're doing here is feedback. We're talking like, hey, I don't love this, I don't love that. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between feedback and harsh criticism. And I mm -hmm. think in the knife community, we should focus on feedback instead of like, you suck. <laughs> like that doesn't help anybody, right? Yeah. So anyway, that's my two bits. Well, before we close out, we have a little surprise for you. Oh, a surprise. I'm so excited. once upon a time, you were the host of Knife Banter. Oh, we're no We're going to way. retire your jersey here. No way, that's nope. amazing. Got the knife and everything. And this one's gonna hang in the studio forever and ever. Ah, that is so cool. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. Be careful, cool. it's not glued on super well. I love it. <laughs> Where do we hang it? I don't know. I love it, that's really cool. I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you haven't followed here. Ben Banters on Instagram, you really should. That He's telling fun. a lot of cool stories. I tell weird stories, I do. <laughs> But yeah, you can you can follow Ben Banters, you can follow NAFs. We do all sorts of weird stuff. Yeah. And you like at the end of the day, you should follow Ben. You're already following. You, like seriously, the guys that have watched the end of this video, like these are the people that would buy you lunch if they found you on the street. They'd be like, hey, here's your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so we put out a call on Instagram for you guys to submit some content about the banter or any of the other NAFs products, and you delivered. So this first one is from at Master Six S Y X, and he has a baby banter. That looks the blacked out version. Yeah, the black but he's got this like leather lanyard on there. 
Mm -hmm. It's got this like super bougie feel to it, like dark. Yeah. I love it. Like and I think it almost makes the knife look bigger. It kind of says this is a big baby banter. Yeah. Do you realize <laughs> like five years ago, six years ago even, like you could just put out potato photography in the knife mm -hmm. industry and everyone would be like, sweet, it looks great. Like the level of photography, like this is the sort of stuff that I'm like, it's so good. It's amazing. And if that one's your favorite, vote on it in the poll. Juice daddy. Juice daddy. Juice daddy. Juice daddy. <laughs> Man, we gotta, we gotta make know. a choir here. I know. What are you doing? HQ Barbershop. <laughs> yeah, so this one's from Juice Daddy on Instagram. And he's got a banter among a lot of other kind of, dare I say, flexi EDC gear. High end EDC. It's, yeah. it's kind of cool because, like, I look at this particular picture and it's like, you've got like this Lynch clip in there. You've got some spendy stuff. Stuff, and then you got like a hundred dollar banter, which to me is like, dang, that's really cool to be part of that club. It's awesome. Yeah, a great shot, and it looks like he really uses his gear too. Yeah, totally. Love a it. Well tailored kit. Yeah, great shot, Juice Daddy, and you are entered in. So this next one comes from Lead Slinging Stevo. That's also a fun name. That people is a fun carry name. banters are very fun. Oh, people. <laughs> they have to be because it's like the goofiest knife in the world. Yeah. I like this picture a lot, mostly because of location. Like mm -hmm. it looks like this guy's fishing. He's got a lure sitting there. He's like out on a dock hanging and I wish I were there. Not that I don't like being here with you, mm -hmm. but like it's it's all about this mood, this vibe. It's I love aspirational it. living right there. Aspirational living. I want to be out on a dock catching fish with a cool little baby banter. Yes. Yes, I love well, it. Well, great shot, lead slinging Steve, and you're entered. So this next one comes from Untitled EDC. I don't know why it doesn't have a title. This is definitely title, it's title worthy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, this one's like nice. You got that vignette going on. You got, you got a knuck in there, flashlight, and a baby banter. I, but I like that saw cut wood in the background. I do too. It's yeah. nice, and like I think when you talk about EDC things that people carry, you got a knife, you got a flashlight, and then a lot of people carry like a worry stone. And I think a lot of these nucks and things are kind of this just hardcore fidget toy, I guess is what I'd call it. Yeah, the thing I have that's awesome and it makes me happy. There you go. Well, yeah. like you, you were talking to me earlier about how people in the knife community like to be a community. We are nice to each other. And I think that's one of the big things about carrying a nuck is, do you use it? Do you not use it? What do you do? Well, it makes you happy, so rock on. It's a, it's a paperweight. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, I love them though. I think they're fun. All right, and you can vote on this one in the poll. So this next one comes from a user named Patches, QNZ, and Knives. Who's, who's been around forever. Like, he's on my Instagram, he's on your Instagram. Like, this guy's awesome. Yeah, and he's got a really cool collection here. He's he's in deep in the banter. He's game. way deep. Like, he's customized with some unlocked composite scales. He's got the, the copper version. He's got Space Kitty scales. He's like, got two of them, look at that. Like, I think it's a reflection, George, but you know. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he has one Space Kitty scales. It's more than I have, so. Seeing double. No, this is a fun <laughs> collection. And like, this warms my heart. Like, this guy, he's put lanyard beads on. Like, you can tell, like, he's way into it, which I'm like, wow. It's just heartwarming. What's not to lie? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for entering, and you can vote on this in the poll. So this one comes from the underscore finest underscore tradition. And it seems that the tradition he is following is space get your custom kitties. banter. <laughs> no, it's space kitties. So mm -hmm. uh, there's this, this uh, company out in Nashville uh, and they, they hit me up and they're like, hey, we can print anything you want on the side of a ban of, of, of the banter. And I was like, space kitties? Because <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't just say space yeah, kitties. Yeah, so like I, I whipped up a Photoshop <laughs> space kitty. So he actually has all of the space kitties released in order. So he has the space kitty on the banter and then we did a Mars kitty and then we did a Space Kitty to the moon on the baby banter, and then we did a Jupiter baby banter as well. He doesn't have the Mars one though, so his his collection is not entirely complete. There's a baby banter Mars. Mm -hmm. uh, He'll get there, don't you worry. I hope so, <laughs> but like, that's super cool. Like I look at that, I'm like, dang, like my little joke has turned into a collection. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> I love yeah, it. This one might actually get my vote. That's a lot of fun. That's cool. Yeah, you can vote on this in the poll. I love it. Now, before we conclude this knife banter in an act of somber reverence, <laughs> We are going to give Ben the highest honor in all of knife banterdom. I'm honored. And that is the 21 OTF suit. <laughs> I'm amused. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one.